Can you believe it? 51 days. 51 days. You know what happened? 2024. Can you believe? What, what happened to the year? Can somebody, what happened to the year? The Bible says redeeming the time. God's doing something, huh? Stewardship in money. Stewardship in money, part two. You better be ready. You better be ready. Seriously, right? You see the stuff. You, you see the events happening. Don't you come away with every day say, I better be ready? Hello? Are y'all asleep already? I just got started. Come on, y'all. Give me a break. Stand up, stretch. Someone once said, you got to have money in the land of milk and honey. And some folk will do anything for some money. Huh? Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19 is an amazing prophecy that you would think that would never happen. It has to deal with money. It would never happen, but it's going to happen. Ezekiel chapter 7, 19, they will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be like what? Refuse. Wait a minute, can y'all believe that? Folk, money will be thrown in the street and nobody's going to pick it up. Now you try that right now. Some of y'all break your neck. <laughs> somebody drop somebody. And their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They will not satisfy their souls nor fill their stomachs because it became their stumbling block of iniquity. See, that's why you and I must share our faith beyond the walls because folk, they, their, their goal, their goal is about that money. I mean, money is not, money is not the issue, but it, isn't it, it's the love of money, the, the greed of money that causes well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, let us be resolved that we're going to share you as you are the answer, not money. You are the answer. And then if we keep you first, boy, you've got, you, you know how to deliver us. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to just do a little summary of part one on, on um, Be Ready. Because when we say be ready, it's complete devotion to God. It, we're talking about self-control. We're talking about wisdom and conversion of our minds. Our mind has to be converted in these last days. The Bible says, let this mind be in who? See, it's personal. Not the pastor, not the deacon, you, that was also in who? So we can think, we can think. We don't have to be deceived. We don't have to... Have a, we don't have to uh, a fall out. We don't have to give up. We can think. We can process. If, if we think like Jesus, we think like Jesus. And remember Daniel 1. He said Daniel 1 is so important because it's the building block. And, and three, in point, three important points we learned from Daniel chapter 1. First, unanswered prayer. That your relationship God, your relationship with God must be more important even when God says no. Is it well with your soul when God says no, that you will continue to trust him and, and follow after him? Second thing, we must be sold out to God is this idea of how food will impact your mood, how food, what we eat, impacts our brains, in our, our bodies, and to think about it, God alone, he defines what foods are healthy and what foods are unhealthy, amen? Genesis 7, clean foods, animals that we eat, and unclean foods are uh, 
animals that we leave alone. When my family and I, when we lived in uh, Micronesia on the island of Palau, one of my members was the Ibadul. The Ibadul was the king of Palau. We got to be pretty good friends. One time, I asked the Ibadul to go on a, uh, a redemptive visit, and he was hesitated, so I just kept on bothering the Ibadul. Come on, come with me, come with me. So he said, okay. So we go to a house, and he knocks on the door, and the man sees the king of the country. He begins to cry. I mean, you don't, what would you do if, if, the, if the king comes to your door? Makes you take a step back. So I said, I'm sorry, Chief. I'll never ask you to go visiting with me again. But, but the Ibadul said, we Palauans, we eat everything that flies in the air. We eat everything that swims in the water. We eat everything that walks on the land. Then he started studying the word. He grew up going to Adventist school and the, L the SDA health clinic. And he became, his family became an Adventist. So it's important for us to understand how God wants us to eat. Remember what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 10, 30, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, that's right, do it for the glory of God. Even when nobody's looking, right? What about 1 o'clock and nobody's around? Okay. God alone defines foods that are healthy and foods that are unhealthy. And then we talk about, uh, Daniel 1 talks about this, this, this stress, this between work and worship. And remember I asked the question, what is your paradigm? What is your concept about work? Is it no worship, just work? How many of y'all work 100 hours a week, 80 hours a week, and you're so tired, you can't even worship? So tired. Get home. I'm going to read the Bible. <clears throat> How many of you is just no work, just worship? Or what about you compartmentalize? Work is uh, secular, and worship is sacred. Or, as Daniel and Hananiah and Hazariah and Mishael, do you connect work and worship? That, 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 that there's a flow there. you got to have money in the land of milk and honey. Money is, is okay, you know, provide for your family. But the problem is this world says do whatever you want by any means necessary, make that money. But right now, you and I must understand money and resources uh, from the way God sees it in this, this, this biblical stewardship. Can somebody say stewardship? Stewardship. Understanding money from stewardship. And it's interesting. You know we live in a time of global debt, Right? Supercomputers, we got all these brilliant people, and yet debt, debt, debt. According to the Institute of International Finance, the global debt stands at $305 trillion. I don't know what trillion is. $305 trillion and is $45 trillion higher than before COVID-19. So here's what global debt, here's what it's made up of. Uh, corporations, governments, and individuals make up the global debt. And, and they tell us that um, of the $305 trillion of debt, corporations account for $161.7 million. That's 53%. Governments owe $85.7 trillion. That's 28%. And individuals comprise $57.6 trillion around the world. Debt, debt, debt. Debt. I want to share with you what a former member of mine gave to me as a definition of debt. Debt. Doing everything but tithing. Debt. If we look at our world, that's what folk are doing. They're doing everything, every type of investment, here and there, but they fail 
to accept God's financial system. And whenever you do everything but tithing, you are going to have problems. Debt. Disobedience brings crisis for the individual, crisis for the family, crisis for corporations, crisis for government, global crisis financially. And so it's so interesting to me, what topic did Jesus talk most about? Did he talk more about prayer? You know, the brother talked about prayer a lot, right? Did he talk more about money? Or did he talk more about faith? Scholars tell us that Jesus talked more about money. Study it, study it, study it. Be, be, be like the Bereans. Remember what Paul said? He liked the Bereans because they searched the scriptures to see if it was true. And so he discussed it because I believe Jesus would under, he knew how the crisis would be about money, this, this urgency about, about money, money, money. And so what Jesus did, he really emphasized stewardship, stewardship. And, and when I'm talking about stewardship, I'm talking about connecting ourselves, who we are, connecting ourselves with worship, connecting ourselves uh, with, with time, and connecting ourselves with resources that we use our time, that we, that we value, that worship is a part of our life, and our resources the way God's way. Does that make sense? Stewardship, stewardship. Psalms 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. God is creator. He owns everything, including you. Do you accept that? So I want to share uh, our SDA belief on this idea of stewardship. What, it, what is stewardship? Stewardship. We are God's stewards entrusted by him with time, opportunity, abilities, and possessions, and the blessings of the earth and its resources. We are responsible to him for their proper use. Do you believe that? Do you live that way? We acknowledge God's ownership by faithful service to him and our fellow human beings and by returning tithe and giving offerings for the proclamation of his gospel and the support and growth of his church. I'm praying and our goal is that this perhaps will be our last year that we will take special offering to catch up for the budget. Because I looked at the numbers, there are enough members in the church, even though we have a mortgage, that we should meet all our bills, renewed. Should meet all our bills. Treasurer, you can smile at me and smile. I want you to smile at me. You want to smile. Do you all, no, serious. So this year, we're going to take one in uh, Thanksgiving and one uh, Christmas, but we're praying, our goal is this will be the last time we do it to catch up. We want to give our money for special projects. W wouldn't you want to do that? I've been in churches that, that we weren't behind in the budget, and the people here, we could do the same thing here if we just believe God's way. If we just believe God's way. So I'm excited about that. This is our last year that we're going to talk about catching up. Amen, Pastor. Stewardship is a privilege given to us by God for the nurture and love and the victory and the victory and the victory over selfishness and covetousness. Stewardship rejoices in the blessings that come to others as a result of their faithfulness. So we're talking about this stewardship. If we live God's way, we'll get out of debt. But the reality is one of the troubling tendencies of fallen humanity is that we compartmentalize, don't we? We compartmentalize what we believe from what we do. 
Amen? And Christ hits the bullseye between what we profess and what we do. Listen to what the Lord says. Buckle up. Matthew 15, verse 8. If I don't show it on the slide, will you turn your Bibles? Okay. Matthew 15, verse 8. Because one day, maybe this stuff won't work. So we got to make sure our Bibles work. But more importantly, you got it in your head and in your heart, right? Matthew 15, verse 8. The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We should be concerned about this. Throughout history, I mean, throughout his ministry, and, you know, as really as we study the gospel, Jesus used as a resource money to reveal our true priorities. If you think about it, well, how you spend your money and what your bank statement is, doesn't that really indicate what's really important to you? Okay, this said yes, and what about this side? Okay, all right, yeah. And what are you saying online? Talking to you, those online. You and I, we gotta be ready, embrace stewardship, because it's personal. Notice how personal Jesus is about this idea of stewardship, of stewardship. It's, it gets really personal, check it out. He said, Luke 10, verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. He gets all in our business. He says, so we answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God all, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. We accept Jesus as our Lord. We give God our self. That's the, that's the, the tipping point, the, uh, the touchstone of stewardship. It begins with you and I giving God our self, the stewardship of our self. Have you done that? Hello? Are you continuing to give, and it's a daily thing that you and I have to give God ourself because we will rise up against God, huh? Won't we? We return to God our devotion, our brains and our bodies and the best of our abilities by, by how we eat and drink and to let the fruit of the Spirit, the character of Christ to grow in us and and guess what? We really begin to think and act and live for Jesus, even in the midst of the time, as the time of trouble gets worse. If we give God ourself, we'll be right where God needs us to be. Stewardship begins with giving ourselves. And part of giving God ourselves is giving God our gifts and talents recognizing our gifts and talents come from God because they all are gifts and talents. Some of you are, have the gift of teaching and others, you, you're, you're great with your hands. Every good gift comes from above, amen? Some are so creative. Others have that musical abilities and those who excel in leadership. And some have the gift of encouragement or in the sciences. I take my hat off especially those who, who are in the care of people, nurses and doctors and assistants, as dangerous as that could be, you're right there every day. Folk coughing, you're right there. I mean, that bad cough. Make you want to run out the room, but there's something that the gift of God has you there. Yeah comes from God. Remember what Colossians Paul 3, 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for who? The Lord. You got a tough time at job? Remember, don't, 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 don't compartmentalize work and worship. 
God will see you through that difficult time, wherever the work is, you're working, work and worship. Next area of stewardship, we, we need to master in these crazy times we live in is the stewardship of time, time. We need air, we need water, we need food to thrive and survive. We also need time. Time is it's, it's an integral part of who we are. Uh, we experience relationship in the world with time. How we use and think about time matters. Dr. N. Scott Peck says, until you value yourself, you won't value your time. Until you value your time, you will not do anything with it. So it's being faithful stewards. Stewards, we honor God by using the time wisely and share our faith beyond the walls to help others get a sense the importance of time. We share the everlasting gospel in our community so that people can understand what really is going on. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Speaks more about this, this, this time. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the what? Time, because the days are evil, and boy, they are. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. This is why I will always say today is a new day. You have never experienced this time, these minutes, this hour. You've never seen these minutes before, and you'll never see it again. So we want to give God the honor, give him first place with the time that we have. You better be ready. We'll be ready if we value our time and give our time with the Lord. We'll be ready as we give God ourself every day. We, we give God priority in our life. We give him priority, first place, and final authority in our life. And then I want to talk about this stewardship of resources. And, and I want to focus on tithe and offering, too, as we talk about resources. Because resources, I'm talking about our stuff, you know, our things, our, our material possessions, our, our financial resources. But whatever we say, they're all gifts from God. I used to think, I worked hard, I did it. Anybody think like that? I, or is it just me? See, our stuff should remind us that God is the source of every blessing. And so God has this financial plan for his people. It's, it's time-tested. It's tithe and offering. And the book of Malachi uh, stresses the importance of obedience for believers, especially returning tithes and offering. If all our members gave tithes and offering, we wouldn't be behind. We wouldn't be behind. Finance shares. Sister Esther, amen? Amen. We wouldn't be behind. We would not be behind. And so this, this we worship God with our lips, but, but there's a gap at renewed. There's a gap at renewed. And so uh, Malachi also uh, has a series of questions and responses, and, and, and the people of God doubt God. And you know how they doubt God? A three-letter word they keep saying to God, H-O-W. When you read Malachi, you see that three-letter word, H-O-W. Seven times you read the word H-O-W. And whenever you see H-O-W, it's doubt. That's what the, the, you know, God says one thing, and the people of Malachi, um, the Christians, they say H-O-W. Okay, so just, just look at it. Malachi 1, verse 2. 
be aware of the H-O-W. Malachi 1, verse 2. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, H-O-W, how have you loved us? See, God has always loved you. Do you receive that? He will always love you. But like today, Israel doubted the love of God. What about you? And doesn't Jesus say the litmus test, the touchstone that proves that you're a disciple is if we love what? Each other. Love is critical. And so God speaks through the prophet Malachi. I love you, but sadly, just like today, the people in Malachi answer the prophet with the words, with the word, with the three letters, H-O-W. How have you loved us? Hmm. So now let's move to the area of finances, okay? So hopefully you resolve, you come to terms that God loves you. I mean, he gave his life on the cross to give evidence that he loves you. And, and I think there are many proofs in your life, any evidences that God has proved that he loves you. And he won't stop loving you. Now, go to chapter 3 to the book of Malachi. Turn to chapter 3 or on your iPhone or whatever phone that you have, cell phone, Malachi chapter 3, verse 7, and wait for the H-O-W. Malachi 3, verse 7. Now, this is God speaking. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord. Now, says the Lord Almighty. Can't get any more authoritative than that. The Lord Almighty says, come on back, and I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. And check out their response. But you ask, do you see it? H-O-W, how shall we return? It's like they're saying, we haven't gone anywhere. We come to church. We give our offerings. We, we, we're active in church. So they say, how are we to return? See, this should concern us. There's something about us that we can be in utter denial and blindness. We should be concerned that we can be so comfortable coming to church and being active, and yet at the same time, our heart can be far from God. Like a ship on the, on the waters, there's no anchor, and, and the tide can just take you out. Take you out. God loves us. He will always love us. So the people ask, how shall we return? And listen to the Lord's response. You need to buckle up. Look at verse 8. So he tells them, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you, and it's personal. See, God is personal. Yet you have robbed me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? And God tells them, tithes and offerings. God said, you are robbing me. They said, how are we robbing you? He says, in tithes and offerings. He says, the whole nation, the whole nation. See, God's people rob their loving God when they follow society, rather obedience to the word. Wondering, are you giving God what he deserves? talking about tithes and offerings. Now God continues to be personal. Notice the personal, first person, singular pronoun. You are under a curse. Your whole nation. Your whole nation. Because you are robbing me. Hmm. Maybe this explains the crisis in the world. Debt, doing everything but tithing. On the back of the currency of the, of the dollar are those words. Do you see them? Those four words, 
Can, can I hear what they say? What does it say? The government. <laughs> Not a church. The government. In God, we trust. They ain't trusting God. Huh? This world ain't trusting God with their finances. They're not having prayer to God. They're not repenting of their sins. They're, not ref they're refusing to be stewards. They're refusing re to, to, to be faithful and loyal. And yet, God takes this serious. You can't play with God. Print on your money in God we trust. And then tell God, talk to the hand, talk to the hand, or rather, talk to the dollar bill, talk to the dollar bill, doing everything but tithing, doing everything but trusting God. But to those who repent, there's a blessing. Look at verse 10. Malachi. See, God abundantly blesses people returning tithes and offering. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, the church where you're, where you're a member, that there may be food in my house and test me. It's interesting. God says, test me with your pocketbook. Start where you are. Start right where you are, and God will bless you. He will. I'm a witness. Anybody tested God? There's evidence out there. God takes this serious. Test me, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out our blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. That's why that 2023 is the last year that we're going to take offering to catch up with the budget. Hallelujah. Boy, if we were Pentecost, we would be speaking in tongues. No, I'm serious. Huh? But we sophisticated folk. Yeah. He is the source of our supply. No more special offerings to catch up for the budget. Hallelujah. Brother Ian, you want to come up here and help me preach this message? No? All right. God will pour out blessing at 3132 Bell Preet Road. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Because we're going to test God. Now, some of y'all who, I mean, it's tithe and offerings. You got to give your offering to the storehouse, too, now. Our tithe, we're a global church. When I was, when I was in Malawi, Africa, on Sabbath, we were, we were studying the same Sabbath school lesson. Do you all know that? We were in, in, in Malawi, Africa, we were praying to the same God. <laughs> and, and we were collecting offering. Yeah, collecting offering. But your offering should, has to go to God. The offering is, is sacred also, like the tithe. Hey, y'all need to be looking at me. The offering is sacred, just as sacred as the tithe. I didn't get any amen. Amen, Ingrid. Ingrid, I didn't get any amen. Should I say it again? The offering is just as sacred as the tithe. And if people, if, if 3132, the members of 3132, take the offering as sacred as a tithe, we wouldn't be behind. The offering ain't for you to decide where you're going to give it. No, it's supposed to go here. And, and, and does anybody know what percentage that you all, that we all agree on our offering? Is it 4%? No, no. Wait, let, me, let me get there. Let me get there. No, wait. Let me get there. Let me get there. Is it 5%? No. Is it 5.5%? Is it 5 and 3 quarters percent? What did you all, you all, Agreed that we would give his offering. Can, can I hear it? Six, go ahead, go ahead, tell the truth. Six to seven percent. Oh, we, if we were Pentecostals, we'd be speaking in tongues right now. Serious. 
Is that your goal? 51 days of 2024. We're getting ready to have our, 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 our um, reflection and vision service. Is that your vision that next year you're going to be at that 6 to 7%? Okay, we got a few over here. I didn't hear anything over here. Online, you need to zoom. You need, if you're online, you need to go into the chat. I need to read something in the chat. This is serious. We should not be behind. We should not be asking. We should not be talking about catching up. Aren't you tired of that? No, serious. Hello, that was a question. Aren't you tired of that conversation? Aren't you tired of talking about we ain't got enough money? Yeah, so let's go for it. Because God said, I will open the floodgates. I'm down with that. And then he says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs> you know what he says in Malachi 3, 6? For I am the Lord, and I'm not changing my mind. I don't care what's going on in the world. I'm not changing my mind. I got this. God says, I got this. I got this. I want to close with two people who struggle with stewardship of themselves and money. Luke 19, we meet Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, tax collector. Nobody liked this dude, right? Because he cheated folk. He cheated folk, but one day, Jesus was in the area. Folk didn't like him, so he didn't mess. He went in the back and still couldn't see, and he climbs a tree, and while Jesus walking, he stops right where Zacchaeus Z, God knows right where you are. Do you realize that? Sometimes we feel nobody cares. Sometimes we think nobody is, is watching us, and Jesus, looking right up at Zacchaeus, is letting us know he's got an eye on looks up. And, and, and after that meeting, listen to the commitment Zacchaeus makes. Luke 19, verse 8. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half of my goods to the poor. And, I have, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusations, I will restore full, fourfold. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And listen to the Lord's response. Verse 9, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Woo! Salvation, he's saved, and he experienced stewardship. He gives God himself, and then he gives his possession. Somebody says it was amazing grace. It was amazing grace, amazing grace that changed this cheating tax collector to give God himself. And if God has you, boy, everything else will flow. I just want to compare and contrast Zacchaeus with another brother. And, and, and at first what we see this brother, if we didn't know the story, we'd have a smile on our face. Because his, his, his biography, he keeps checking the boxes. He keeps checking the boxes. And, 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 and it's the story of the rich young ruler. Remember, you know that brother, right? But see, this brother should concern us. He falls down at the feet of Jesus, and he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, and Jesus responds, Keep the commandments of the law. And the man says, I got this. Remember? I got this. Yeah, I got this. And Jesus looked at him and said, I love him. I love you. He always loves. And he says, one thing you lack. Hey, what if God is saying there's one thing you lack? Huh? One thing you lack. 
And he said, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. I tell you, this brother should concern us because he walked away sad because his wealth had him. See, Zacchaeus, he responds immediately. He gives God himself, and, 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 and it impacts his pocketbook. He promised to give half of what he owes to the poor, and out of the remaining, he vows to pay quadruple anyone he's cheated. But that rich young ruler should concern us. This brother should concern us because he went to church on Sabbath. He didn't eat unclean food. He was kind. He didn't steal. He gave tithes and offering. He should concern us because he did all the activities, but his heart was far from God. I'm wondering how many Sabbaths in a row you come to church and your heart is still far from God. All the prayer meetings you've gone to. All the Bible studies you're given. And yet your heart is still, still far off. This brother should concern us. But thank God for Zacchaeus. Because it shows that God can make a way out of no way. That it's amazing grace that where sin is, the grace of God is greater. Wherever we are, wherever we're stuck, there's grace. My wife fell, broke her hand, but there was grace. Some of you sitting here, pain in your body, but there's grace. Struggling with finances, but there's grace. It's up to you and me to let folk know about the grace of God is greater than the fear that's in this world. I'm telling you to look at the, 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 the news you need after looking at 10 minutes of news, you need 20 minutes of the word of God so the grace of God can grow in your mind and you can go tell somebody Jesus is coming again. Talking about the grace of God, y'all. Easy in grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Bell Pre Road. It's time that we allow the grace of God to do what grace can do, especially in this area of finances. But it ain't about the money, it's about you. It's about you. God blesses you, and you divert, you divert, and you divert. It's time to repent. I'm not going to ask you to come up. Every head is bowed. On Zoom, you need to be praying. Where are you robbing God? You're robbing God. You, first person, singular, pronoun. You, how are you robbing God? He tells us, is it tithe? Is it offering? Or is it both? 51 days. 51 days to our... Our, our, our reflection and vision. You need to clear this up with the Lord. You need to clear this up with the Lord. You need to clear this up with the Lord. You can be like Zacchaeus <laughs> or you can be like that 
Maybe he was an Adventist. I know there were no Adventists at that time. You could be like that rich young ruler. Checking up all the boxes. Think about it. Jesus offered him. He said, come follow me. What an invitation. Come follow me. And then Jesus says, you'll have treasures in heaven. <laughs> and he walked away sad. Mercy. Amazing grace. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We're focusing on stewardship and, and finances. We don't want to go down because of finances. And our church budget is telling the story by what we say and what the budget is. We want to be right. You have us here. We're strategically, we're strategic. There's so much we want us to do. We want to let you loose. We want to let God loose to do what only God can do for us and our community. They're looking for us. They need us. It's amazing grace. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen. I said it can happen. I said it can happen. I said it can happen. Father, we thank you. If you're outside the church, if you're looking for a church membership, we're praying. You want to transfer your membership, just raise your hand. If you don't have a church home, this is the time to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to allow you, allow your amazing grace and love to transform us, that we can be the people we need to be in these last days. In Jesus' name I pray, and we all say, amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing.